Well, the Act actually introduces a new methodology uh, known as site value uh, and is consistent with other states in that regard um, for determining the value of non-rural land, which will include residential land, uh, while rural land in Queensland will continue to be valued according to its the traditional test in Queensland of unimproved value. Um, in the concept of site value does away with those intangible elements which have in Queensland be, been controversial for some time. Those intangible elements being the benefit of infrastructure credits, um, and the benefit of leases and agreements for lease, and the benefit of development approvals. So essentially, um, in the future, uh, statutory valuations for non-rural land will be um, based on site value and won't include the value of those intangibles. Um, moving away from residential for uh, commercial uh, properties including shopping centres and, and CBD land uh, where the benefit of those intangible elements is significant, um, for example the um, benefit of leases and, and infrastructure credits, um, there may be a, um, some advantage from the change from unimproved to site value uh, for those kinds of properties. Um, the other advantage uh, in the Act is in terms of the objections and appeal processes. Uh, there's, it was previously the case that it was, it was um, the objections and appeals processes were quite pres prescriptive. Um, however, uh, the new Act has relaxed some of those uh, prescriptive requirements and, and um, really will benefit landowners in the future in, in making an objection in relation to their statutory valuations. Well, um, the new site value method um, is really more a reflection of the market value of the land and includes um, the site improvements that have been affected to the land, for example, the value of uh, vegetation clearing, of drainage works, of extensive fill works. So those um, kinds of improvements will actually be uh, captured in the statutory value uh, of non-rural land in the future. So um, there's potentially a disadvantage for uh, properties which are the subject of significant site improvements um, over, over the years. Um, however, the Act does provide some transitional mechanisms. Um, one of the important ones is the opportunity for landowners to make an application for a deduction for site improvements. Um, the owner can make that application where the owner, um, him or herself, um, made the site works or, um, and paid for those site works and there's been no change of ownership in, in the interim period. Also, for properties where there's been an increase exceeding $1 million between the unimproved value and the site value in the next round of valuations, uh, there is a concession called the transitional offset, which will automatically be applied um, in the next round of valuations. So uh, the effect of the transitional offset is that um, the difference between the unimproved value and the site value uh, will be transitioned in incrementally over the next 12 um, statutory values for land. So where there has been a significant jump, uh, this will be phased in incrementally. A real catalyst for the change from unimproved value uh, to site value uh, for non-rural land was the difficulty in assessing um, the unimproved value of land which is highly improved because what's essentially required is an understanding of, of the land in its original estate um, and it's very hard to um, hypothetically imagine what um, highly improved land um, looked like in its original state many years ago. Um, I'm told that it's the case that it's not so difficult to hypothesise what the difference, what the original state of the land was in terms of for rural land. Um, also, if uh, rural land were to be valued on the basis of its site value, arguably that would be a disincentive for uh, farmers to improve their land. Um, and as you're aware, the um, farm improvements are integral to a farming business, so um, it, it, there would be sort of that um, penalty uh, effect, if you like. Um, the benefit of development approvals on a site value approach, um, they're, they're just not taken into account. So uh, for um, owners of land seeking development approvals, they shouldn't be worried that it, it will trigger um, a large increase in, in statutory value. What is taken into account, however, is the zoning of the land under the planning scheme. Upon subdivision of land, uh, a new statutory value will be issued for the subdivided parcels. Generally speaking, there are exceptions. It's important to keep in mind, actually, um, for purchases of land that while the developer of the land may have enjoyed the benefit of site improvement deductions or a transitional offset um, under the new regime, um, the purchases of land 
won't enjoy those benefits because those benefits only continue while ownership of the land um, stays, um, stays the same. Upon issue of the valuations um, in March next year, owners will have an opportunity um, to make an application for deductions for existing site improvements um, which were undertaken on the site prior to commencement of the Act. Um, that can be dealt with through the objection process. The only deductions which can be captured in, in that process are, are for site improvements affected over the past 12 years. Um, so landowners will really need to consider um, what, if any, improvements may qualify for deductions um, through that process. Mm. An annual valuation notice will itself um, specify whether any deductions have been applied and the value of such deductions. Um, there's also a process under the Act um, for the land, land Registry to keep a record of all site improvement deductions and also to keep a record of when um, an offset has been applied to evaluation. Uh, those should be uh, searchable registers. Well, it's the department that will actually determine the value of land for the statutory valuation purposes. Um, the owner will be given every opportunity to uh, retain its own valuer and participate in the objection and appeal processes if it determines um, that it wishes to contest the, the statutory valuation. Uh, in the future, all land in Queensland will be valued on an annual basis rather than in two, three or five yearly cycles to which we are accustomed. There are exceptions. Uh, if the valuer general forms the opinion that there's been negligible market movement for a particular local government area, it might be that statutory valuations don't issue for that uh, local government area. However, the general rule is that each property in uh, Queensland will be valued on an annual basis.